Hey guys, welcome back to Supernatural Saturday. I'm Coco and every Saturday I sit down and talk about one paranormal haunted location or just unexplained event. Today, as you can tell by the title, we are talking about Goatman's Bridge or as it's better known in the YouTube community, Shane's Bridge or Shane and Ryan's Bridge. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please go and check out BuzzFeed Unsolved Supernatural's little Goatman's Bridge video. It's hilarious, definitely worth watching, but Recently I rewatched it because yes, I rewatched their videos. They're funny, give me a break. But I was rewatching it and it doesn't really go into detail about really the history of Goatman's Bridge and when I looked it up there's a lot more to the story than what they touched on in that video. So I decided to come out with this because I did the research for it anyway because I get curious. I also apologize for wearing glasses today. My eyes are a little bit dry. I decided to give them a break from my contacts, which is a very important thing to do. I worked in optometry and ophthalmology for over four years and you need to give your eyes a break from contacts if they're not feeling comfortable. Please don't push them too far because you can end up with horrible, horrible infections and just scarring and you can get to the point where you can't even wear contacts anymore if you overwear them. So glasses today. I'm sorry about the glare. You can see the window in the background, I'm sure. <laughs> so finally getting into the actual story. This bridge was built in 1884 and is actually called Old Alton's Bridge. It's in Denton, Texas and it is so famously haunted. It has attracted ghost hunters, paranormal researchers, just everybody to come and check it out. It is supposed to be just ripe with so many occurrences. But like many hauntings, this tale of the bridge has many different stories that are associated and the supposed reason why it is haunted. The main story that is circulating the internet in relation to this bridge is that of an African-American man named Oscar Washburn. He was a very well respected and liked goat herder in the area and he was <laughs> well known for his goat milk, cheese, hides, anything that you could get from a goat, he had the best and everyone came to him. But unfortunately one day he decided to hang a sign on the bridge that said, this way to the goat man. And he had earned that nickname through his work and was very affectionately called by it by the townspeople. But the sign angered certain people in the community that were a part of the Ku Klux Klan. On an August night in 1938, supposedly the Klansmen traveled across this bridge with their headlights off as to not give away that they were on their way to Oscar Washburn's home. They abducted him in the middle of the night and drug him back to the bridge where they secured a noose around his neck and threw him over the side. But to their shock, when they looked over, there was only an empty noose hanging from the bridge with no sign of Oscar Washburn. They frantically ran down to the bottom to the creek that was below. The water was undisturbed. They didn't hear any splash as if he had fallen out of the noose. They couldn't find any sign of him. So the men, obviously a little freaked out, but wanting to draw him out into the open, go back to his family's home and set it ablaze with his family inside. Obviously this ended the lives of his wife and his children, but Oscar never came out into the open. It did not do as the KKK had intended it to, and that was the last anyone had heard of Oscar Washburn. It is said that it is his spirit that haunts the bridge seeking revenge for himself and his family. There is also another theory that it's not actually Oscar Washburn himself haunting the bridge, but his wife frantically searching forever and ever for the souls of her children that were lost that day. Now, like I said, there are other stories of possibly what could have happened to attract this haunting, one of which is from a Creole goat herder named Jack Kendall, who was hung by a tree over the creek where the bridge would eventually stand by the Copper Canyon Cowboys. Say that three times fast. Copper Canyon Cowboys, Copper Canyon Cowboys, Copper Canyon Cowboys. Now, unfortunately, this hanging did not go as they had planned. When they hung him from the tree, his head became separated from his body. But as his body lay in the mud below the tree, it became reanimated, stood up, and ripped the head. Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. This is not funny. 
supposedly he ripped the head off of a goat and placed it on his shoulders to replace the head that was still hanging from the noose above. Obviously, this scared the cowboys completely, and they never returned to the same spot. Obviously, that story is a little bit more outrageous, and if you look in the history books, you will never see a mention of either Jack Kendall or Oscar Washburn ever being in the area. But as locals say, that does not mean that the location is not haunted. These are simply stories that were possibly created to help explain what was happening at this bridge. There are also theories and actually proven that Satanists will congregate at this bridge and in the surrounding trees to perform cult activities, I guess. All of their ceremonies and animal sacrifices and it's actually documented that in the area pet stores stopped selling cats because the cats that they were selling were being found, butchered, and sacrificed in the forest surrounding this bridge. It's theorized that possibly the Satanists could have invited this spirit there or possibly even opened a portal to hell or some kind of other side letting demons in. Obviously, People think that this is a demonic presence. It is not simply a spirit. It's also stated that it could be some kind of a satyr, some part goat, part man creature haunting the forest around the bridge. Now to get into the actual hauntings, some things that are stated to actually happen at this bridge is when it was still in use as a travel way by a car, which it is not anymore and has not been used since 2001, so please do not go there and try and drive across it. It is said that if you turn your headlights off and drive across the bridge, as the KKK members did when they were going to get Oscar Washburn from his home, it's said that you will be greeted on the other side by the goat man himself. Another legend is if you stand on the bridge and knock on the metal trusses three times or sit in your car and honk your horn two or three times, it kind of varies by legend, you invite the judgment of the goat man. But supposedly he will only steal you away if you have direct lineage to either slave owners or KKK members. It's stated that this is the revenge of Oscar Washburn for his family. There are so many reports of people being touched, grabbed, pushed. There's one story of someone even being thrown off of the bridge itself into the water below. There have even been rocks thrown at people from the tree lines surrounding the bridge. There are also many sounds to be heard while you're on this bridge. You may hear something rustling in the tree line near you on the bridge, or you'll hear something in the water below. Some people claim to have heard footsteps or even hoofbeats of something or someone walking behind them, trying to scare them to run off the bridge. There have been actual reports of abandoned vehicles just being found on the bridge with their owners nowhere around, or cars just breaking down while trying to cross the bridge. It's even reported that sometimes the car doors will lock and unlock on their own multiple times as you're driving across. Some people report seeing glimpses of what looks like a man or even a satyr running through the woods holding either goat heads or human heads. People also see strange lights glowing and floating. A lot of people claim that these are the eyes of the goat man himself, glowing red, staring back at you. There are also sightings, supposedly, of a woman standing in the trees, maniacally laughing. Could this be the wife of Oscar Washburn? And has she been driven mad by the constant search for her children? People state that there are a few signs to look out for before the goat man actually makes an appearance. He is preceded by the smell of rotting flesh, just a horrible smell, and glowing red eyes in the tree line watching you. Uh, everything in these stories points towards something demonic, if you believe in that sort of thing. Knocking three times to entice a visit, or the smell of rotting flesh, or what some people describe as sulfur. This all points to possibly something not just another spirit, not just a simple haunting, but it could be 
demonic. So obviously I would not recommend anyone actually go there and try to entice the goat man out to you because never mess with demons. <laughs> you can mess with spirits, all right, sure, I'll give you that, it's fun sometimes, but do not mess with demons. They do not hold to the same rules the spirits do. It is not worth it. So I hope you enjoyed today's Supernatural Saturday. Are you brave enough to go to Goatman's Bridge? Are you brave enough to dance like Shane and challenge the Goatman to throw you off? Let me know if you're brave enough below and I will see you next week for another Supernatural Saturday. See you then.